from Mario to Master Chief. That game is awesome. 8-bit to high def. The battle is on. It's one team trying to beat the other team. Heroes versus assassins. Finish him. Finish him. Finish him. Legends versus monsters. She's the toughest bad guy in the game. Boom shakalaka. We're counting down the top 100 video games of all time. Cool. Mario Brothers is basically like a, a quest on acid. Just last night, I was lost in the jungle with Pitfall Harry. I love shooters. Best game of all time is Mario Party. Skyrim is a way of life. Best game of all time. And that's a game we used to play a lot. Portal is the best game on the planet. I got really hooked on that game. And now, up, up, down, down. Left, right, left, right. B, A, B, A. Select start. At number 60, Contra. I used to love that game. Nintendo, old school. We're classic gamers right We're now. taking it back right now. I would say Contra. Contra was dope, man. Contra was always one of the best games ever. Oh, good memories of Contra. Contra love. Though Contra was released to arcades in 1987, it's probably the version ported to the NES the following year that most gamers remember. The cover was just two Schwarzeneggers. Yeah. Just going yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Started with just you like somersaulting into the jungle and then you would just immediately shooting aliens. Now I think about it, Contra was pretty much Predator. Up to that point, I'd played games like Zelda and Mario. They were all, oh, cute little Nintendo games. And along comes this game with these badass uh, kind of Rambo Marine looking guys with these uh, crazy laser weapons against these insane aliens from space. Needless to say, it won my heart over. <laughs> My favorite weapon was the spread shooter. The spread gun would be like, like you kick ass on that. The spread gun, you know, you had to catch them in parachutes that came down on top of you. You get the, the S symbol and you had the spray gun, and that was always the gun you needed to, you know, always get to the next level. And if you could find a way to keep that to the end, it was always good. <laughs> Contra was an extremely difficult game. These were the kind of games when you were young in the 80s and 90s that you would just be willing to play these masochistic experiences. You could play that game forever. Uh, it took me probably like two years to beat it. I had to use the code to beat it, otherwise I would never have beaten it. For most players, the only way they ever beat Contra was using the Konami code. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, B, A, start, or select, start. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, select. Starts. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, B, A, select start to player. At this point, I would usually just start slamming the controller into the ground. You get 30 guys, beat Contra, and then go have pizza. It was awesome. Contra was a great game. Next up, a game that followed a simple formula. Point, click, laugh. At number 59, it's Maniac Mansion 2, Day of the Tentacle. Mm. Uh, oh my god, Day of the Tentacle? This game was amazing! Maniac Mansion 2, Day of the Tentacle, is an example of a weird, warped game. Released for the PC in 1993 by LucasArts, Maniac Mansion 2 is a point-and-click adventure game that follows Bernard Bernoulli and his pals as they try to thwart a disembodied tentacle's plans to rule the world. I feel like I could take, take on the world. Day of the Tentacle, is uh, awesome because it's got a tentacle in it. And I mean, tentacle is funny to say, also funny to fight. Only Tim Schafer would make a game called Day of the Tentacle. I often refer to Day of the Tentacle as the last time I had fun making games. If Maniac Mansion 2's storyline wasn't silly enough already, players progress through the game using a malfunctioning time machine made from a portable potty. Bernard, float over here so I can punch you. We thought it would really be fun that the, you know, the kids were traveling through time and solving stuff. We really didn't have much more than that. I mean, obviously, we had to do a lot of really rigorous scientific research to figure out all the time travel aspects of that game, because I think it's got a lot of respect of a lot of very serious 
serious physicists. This must be that Woodstock place mom and dad are always talking about. Maniac Mansion 2 Day of the Tentacle was a groundbreaking fusion of comedy and gaming and will forever hold a cherished place in video game history. It was one of the few games where I just remember laughing out loud so many times while playing the game. It was just so ridiculous. That thing is a blur of like laughing, spitting up things out of my nose, and just like the ridiculousness of time travel. And I always have a, a warm place in my heart for Day of the Tentacle. Up next, a title that proved a massively multiplayer game was not only possible, it could be incredibly fun. At number 58, a world that is Ultima Online. Ultima Online is pretty much the only game I played in college. It just changed the whole way we look at video yeah. games. Released in 1997, Ultima Online pushed the boundaries of gaming and social networking to help create a new genre with an ever-evolving game world, a user-driven economy, and player versus player combat. We could see the emergence of the internet. We could see the emergence of this connectivity. We knew already the power that would be there if we could create a successful game. Richard Garriott, who took his Ultima money and built himself a castle and sent himself into space. He made that much money from Ultima because it was that popular. Ultima is a franchise that, I mean, defined RPG gaming. There's a lot of things that owe a debt of gratitude to Ultima and what it did. Next, the debut game for an addictive franchise that enraptured millions of kids. It was an insidious game that stole the minds of our nation's youth. At number 57, gotta catch them all, it's Pokemon Red and Blue. Pokemon? Okay, I mastered that You're Ash Ketchum and you're like, you know, you're on your quest to go like hunt and catch and collect all the Pokemon in the world. This game was the must have game for the Game Boy. You had to, you know, catch all of the 150 plus Pokemon and then pit them against each other. Why? I have no idea. The dual releases of Pokemon Blue and Pokemon Red introduced gamers around the globe to Pikachu, everyone's favorite yellow electric mouse. Wait, he was a mouse? Pikachu! I've always felt that Pokemon had something to do with retribution for World War II. <laughs> Torturing the parents. <laughs> Apparently the Japanese are still fighting the war. <laughs> Whether you were down with Pikachu or not, there's no denying that tons of other people were. The first Pokemon game ranks as the best-selling RPG of all time. I have like so many fond memories of like going at, like about to different places and like capturing all the Pokemon. I beat the whole game. I collected every single Pokemon. I filled up my Pokedex. I love the game. It's just one of those old school games that they just haven't. You can't remake it. Coming up next, Warrior is about to die. Valkyrie needs food. Warrior needs food. It's time to throw down the gauntlet and take on one of Disney's toughest baddies. Get ready for this. Ursula is, that's another vein popping out of my head. Plus, we catch up to the fastest blue hedgehog on the planet. It's a badass. But first, although Contra made it famous, which game was the Konami code invented to help defeat? The answer when the top 100 returns. Before the break, we asked which game the Konami code was invented to help defeat. The answer? Gradius, Konami's insanely difficult side-scrolling shooter first released in 1985. Get ready to bust out your best ultra combo. That felt good to me. At number 56, it's Super Street Fighter 4. Fighting games were all but KO'd when Capcom released Street Fighter 4 in 2008. Okay, baby. Well, in 2008, fighting games were like on a downfall. Like not a lot of people were playing fighting games. But when Street Fighter 4 came out, it brought back everyone together. It brought everyone back to life. SF4 brought fighting games back to life but it was Super Street Fighter 4 that set the bar for what a modern brawler could be and got everyone back on the sticks. It's the biggest time in the history of Street Fighter. Everybody knows this game. 
But I used to do the old when Street Fighter first came out. That's when it was easy. Now it's reached too many levels for even me to hang with. I love playing that sumo because I, I can't play it at all. But for some reason, I know that one sumo is like super flappy arm. Like he's like big and fat, and then he's like. <laughs> he can almost beat anyone. Super Street Fighter 4 is one of the best fighting games I've ever played. Next, an unlikely collaboration that yielded one of the most original games in years. At number 55, Kingdom Hearts. Man, Kingdom Hearts. Allow me to demonstrate. This 2002 PlayStation release was the product of a partnership between gaming giant Squaresoft and Disney. Kingdom Hearts was one of the pinnacles of kind of like Japanese RPG meeting American culture and all of it rushing together. And you squish those together into a sandwich and you come out with a game that people are so dedicated to that we get emails about the game still, still. I was super excited for it to come out because I love the Final Fantasy games and it was a lot of people that worked on Final Fantasy came on to work on Kingdom Hearts. And I was excited to like get to see like Disney characters and how they integrated them into this world. We better get out of here. It's really pretty incredible. I mean, from Aladdin to to the, the Little Mermaid level uh, was murderous. The Ursula is that's another vein popping out of my head. The blending of die-hard gamers and dedicated Disney fans resulted in a successful new franchise and an entire generation of Kingdom Hearts cultists. I had like this one other friend, and, and how I knew he played it, he came to school one day, he had like a Kingdom Hearts jacket on. I guess I could give that a try. I was like, you play Kingdom Hearts? And he's like, yeah, I play Kingdom Hearts. That was like our common. The game is just amazing. It got hardcore gamers, it, it, it got young kids who had never really played RPGs like that involved, and you know, I just, I wish they would do more stuff like that now. Behold! No! Up next... Wizard is about to die. We head back into the dungeon with number 54, Gauntlet. Gauntlet was um, one of the main games at the skate park I grew up at, so I would hear it in the arcade every day, you know, like, Warrior is about to die, Valkyrie needs food. Valkyrie needs food. Gauntlet hit arcades in 1985 and blew gamers away with its ability to let four people play at the same time. Gauntlet was that first game where you were like, why are four people around a video game? It was the first kind of true multiplayer experience. Now, Gauntlet, that's a party! Valkyrie needs food. Valkyrie needs food badly. <laughs> There's four different joysticks, and you would pick four different characters. You're either the, the warrior, the Valkyrie, the wizard, or the elf. And we would always, always, always let the elf die. Always. I don't know why. I don't know why. Warrior needs food. Warrior is about to die. Warrior needs food. Warrior needs food, absolutely. I like to play the wizard. The wizard's my favorite. Gauntlet was great. Gauntlet redefined what co-op gaming could be and gave players their first glimpse at the multiplayer experiences we're playing today. That was also one of the first games, I, I think I put like 20 bucks in there. Now for the game that changed the way we looked at first-person shooters and RPGs. At number 53, Deus Ex. All right. Do this. It was really an amazing blend of first-person shooter and gameplay with RPG elements. What else do you know? ASX had this incredibly complicated and well-crafted story about conspiracies and, and government. Deus Ex was released in the year 2000 in the wake of the Y2K panic, and gamers embraced its dark, dystopian vision along with its compelling blend of genres. Deus Ex, that kind of embraced that kind of cyberpunk technology that a lot of authors had kind of explored, but video gamers haven't really played with up until that point. Deus Ex ushered in a new era of complex gameplay. Suddenly, players were given freedom of choice, with each decision impacting the storyline. 
one of the first games that allowed you to do things your own way. You weren't just a dude who got a, like a flamethrower. You could manipulate how you wanted your character to be in the game. They could solve puzzles in any number of ways. They could sneak past the giant mech, they could take it down with combat, or they could hack it and reverse it and make it fight for them. I don't have time for games. It wasn't just that you were, you know, going through this game and, and, and looking for a solution and getting to the end. I mean, you were having to write your own story. It is the start of making choices and making choices matter to gamers and affect on how the games are perceived and played. And that's why Deus Ex is a classic. Coming up next. I got it. I finished it. I'm addicted. One of the most addicting games of all time takes aim at a rock and roll superstar. We play a lot of rock band in my house. Plus, the Mario title that changed gaming forever. It was mind blowing. I never seen anything like it. Here we go! But first, what was Mario's original name? The answer when the top 100 video games returns. Before the break, we asked, what was Mario's original name? The answer, Mr. Video. Not only did the name Mario come later, so did his ability to jump. Next on the countdown, a game that truly rocks. At number 52, Rock Band 3. It allowed just about everybody to be a rock star, you know? And uh, you could live vicariously through that game. My girlfriend's super into that, so uh, we play a lot of Rock Band at my house. Released in 2010, Rock Band 3 introduced awesome new features like three-part harmonies, a realistic pro mode, and a keyboard, making jam sessions with friends more fun than ever. Everybody wanted to have the keyboard. <laughs> it's so much fun, it's so ingenious. I think it's the best instrument that lends itself to a music game that I've ever actually seen. Now, I didn't really think that I would get that hooked into like the music games. But the execution of Rock Band, plus the library of music, you can go online and always find some band that you really like and download it. Thanks to its variety of downloadable tracks, Rock Band 3 has endless replay value. And even some real rock bands are downloading their own music to dominate the game. Well, almost. I do, I definitely suck. I got like probably 70% on my own singing, and it was like, that's, can't, that can't be, it can't be like that. I mean, I know this part, I sing this part. Yes, yeah, so I failed rock band at my own song. That is the unfortunate truth. <laughs> a moment of silence. But <laughs> well, I thought it was hilarious. I, didn't I think thought it was, it was a bad I thing. thought you had it. I was like, we're going to ace this. Yeah, I was like, oh, I'll give it. Leaderboard. I than this, yeah. but no. Okay. Real life rocker or virtual virtuoso, Rock Band 3 proved that anyone can be a star. My dad's on the drums, my mom's on the mic. I'm usually playing guitar or keys and, you know, it's really an amazing thing. Next on The Countdown, a sequel that surpassed the original with more action, more hilarity, and more delightful weaponry. Should I have a look? At number 51, it's Ratchet and Clank going commando. Released in 2003 for the PlayStation 2, Going Commando featured Ratchet, who was a... Uh, wait, what the hell was he exactly? It's some sort of rodent thing, like a squirrel, fox, uh, hybrid uh, that can talk and is like a spaceman. Well, whatever he may be, Ratchet teams up with his robot pal Clank to bring peace and justice to the galaxy. So you sell these gadgets? For the sequel, we had to figure out what can we do to top all the crazy weapons that we had in the first game. You might have a slime gun, or you might have like a giant rocket launcher. My favorite gun is of course the Sheepinator. You get to turn enemies into sheep. Wait, I guess that was pretty self-explanatory, wasn't it? Ratchet and Clank going commando wrapped brains, brawn, and laughs into one irresistible game. A really important aspect of Ratchet and Clank for us at Insomniac was humor. And that's reflected in the story, it's reflected in the character design, it's reflected in the weapons, and it's certainly reflected in the game's titles. My word, you young people are so fresh these days. There are a lot of inappropriate references, except they're all perfect double entendres. So the kids aren't going to get it, and the adults are sitting in the back being like, <laughs> Next up, a blindingly fast blue furball who gave Mario a run for his money. 
At number 50, Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, I'm all dead from Sonic. Sonic was awesome. I love Sonic the Hedgehog. He's a badass. Sonic the Hedgehog was Sega's answer to Mario, giving the company a recognizable mascot and players an alternative to Nintendo's famous plumber. Sonic the Hedgehog is the first game that made you rethink how much you loved Mario. Sonic was the Mario Brothers for the Sega Genesis. I used to play it almost every day when I was younger. I mean, um, I don't know exactly what it was. It just it kept my attention. I guess a lot of games don't keep my attention, and that was one of the games that did. Uh, I like Sonic the Hedgehog because it brings me back to the glory days when I used to be good at video games, and I really thought that one day I could see a hedgehog and he'd be doing the same thing. Released in 1991, Sonic the Hedgehog gave gamers an attitude and velocity they hadn't seen before in a side-scrolling mascot. When Sonic the Hedgehog came out, it kind of blew us all away because this was the first uh, video game character you could play that had sneakers on. He had a bad attitude, and it was more rock and roll than Super Mario. He was cute, but also kind of feisty. Sonic the Hedgehog was the first game that really sucked me in, and I cannot tell you how many times I heard Sega, and then he was like, doo, 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 doo. That's stuck in my head. I just, yep, I did that. The no-no hand from Sonic. Sonic the Hedgehog finally gave Sega a popular mascot and gamers a new series that's still speeding along today. Sonic the Hedgehog was classic. And next on our countdown, a game that's probably in your pocket right now. Launching onto our number 49 spot, it's that madly addictive puzzle game, Angry Birds. I got it, I finished it. I'm addicted. You no, know I just got hooked on Angry Birds. Angry Birds was the game that the entire world played for about one year straight. Angry Birds was the world's response to bird flu. We took the decapitated heads of diseased poultry and we launched it where? Into a fort filled with pigs. I hate those pigs. F those pigs. I want them to die. First released in 2009, Angry Birds' elegant physics puzzles managed to ensnare even the most casual gamer. I remember I was playing it for a while and I started getting really into it. And I was like, oh, I want to finish this game and I want to get all three stars. And I can honestly say I've completed all levels, three stars. Angry Birds has, has guided me through many uh, uh, airports and flights and waiting rooms. If they're ever stuck in traffic, uh, which I sometimes am, or maybe I shouldn't admit to playing Angry Birds in traffic. I, I wouldn't do that, people. The Angry Birds franchise has just passed one billion downloads. Angry Birds, they're on top of it. They put out new content regularly. They keep everybody playing. It doesn't get old. It's not going away. I think it's a very simple, very elegant concept. I think it works for everyone. I've got like the Christmas Angry Birds, the Halloween Angry Birds. I think there's a Rio de Janeiro Angry Birds. I have like six different versions of Angry Birds, and they're all cool. Coming up next, Bo knows Tecmo. You try to get 99 yards per every rush. Like Rockstar knows the Old West. John Marston marries a hooker and is blackmailed by his government. Just a story of my life. Plus, Mario has to save the princess again. We all know what Mario really wants. Here we go! But first, which game character's name is also the name of a gene on chromosome 7 of the human genome? The answer, after the break. Before the break, we asked what video game character is also the name of a gene? The answer, Sonic the Hedgehog. When not collecting gold rings, it helps regulate the growth of your button mashing digits. You don't need sick graphics and epic storylines to make our list. All you really need is Bo Jackson. Bo knows everything. Bo knows baseball, he knows football, he, he knows techno too. Bo knows Tecmo Bowl. Sprinting its way to number 48, Tecmo Bowl. Tecmo Bowl was my favorite game. The Tecmo Bowl was awesome. It was such a great game. Tecmo Bowl was one of my favorites. Put, put, put. Released for the NES in 1989, Tecmo Bowl became the football title of choice. 
Techno Bowl was dope because it was like the first game where they had a season in the sports game. So I was a big Bears fan, and Techno Bowl was the first game where I realized you could do like entire seasons, and man, that was the game changer. Where you could all of a sudden go, I could do the Bears and try to do the Bears all the way through the year. I used to do sleepovers with friends, and we would go from like nine at night to three in the morning. They had like maybe four or five teams, six teams, uh, four or five plays. You just had to make it happen. If they picked the same play as you did, you were screwed. And if you picked the right play, it was a touchdown. I don't never like to run the ball. I just like throwing it. It was never a time where they don't catch the ball. It was either caught by the person or intercepted. It was never really no incomplete passes when you played Tecmo Bowl. Tecmo Bowl was amazing, though, because there were superstars in football at the time, and they felt like superstars in the game. Willie Galt, like, that was my dude right there. Like, he caught everything. But the most famous superstar in Tecmo Bowl history was Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson was the best player. If you have Bo Jackson on your team, you are set. You give him the ball every time, you feed him the ball all day long, he will cruise through the line of scrimmage, and you kick outside to the bottom of the screen, and you go. Go all the way up, and you go all the way across, and you try to get 99 yards per every rush. It must have been in his contract that he was just 10 times faster than every other player. Bo Jackson was one of the guys on there that was just unstoppable. Superstar players, your favorite teams, and Bo Jackson. Tecmo Bowl amazed gamers and changed digital football forever. It was insane. It was fantastic. It was the first football game I ever played, and I still own it to this day. Next up is a game that entranced millions. At number 47, Step Into, Mist. I think Mist is one of the most influential games of all time. A PC adventure game released in 1993, Mist gradually and hypnotically revealed its secrets. When that game came out, it was so beautiful, it was so immersive, it's eerie, it's spooky, it's scary. It was really the connection, I think, between the high-resolution graphics and the sound effects. I just knew I would take up too much of my life. Like, I wouldn't be here on television. I'd be sitting in an apartment alone in Burbank still playing Mist and just covered in Cheetos. There were no enemies to fight, and your avatar couldn't die. Just a seriously weird island to explore and puzzles upon puzzles to crack. It's all problem solving, all puzzles, no shooting. It was kind of a choose your own adventure, but with puzzles. And somehow they managed to make these still images really engaging. I don't know. There's something about just looking at a screenshot going, what is it? Is there a lever? There was something about it that was enchanting in an almost musical hypnotic way. I just, I played that thing for days. That's all I did, and it was so beautiful. Even now, if, like, if I'm somewhere and I'll be like, man, this looks just like mist. Thank you again. It's off to the Wild West for the game at number 46, the immersive open world Western adventure, Red Dead Redemption. Red Dead Redemption is every Great Western. Red Dead Redemption put players in the dusty boots of John Marston and dropped them in the middle of a modern spaghetti Western. John Marston marries a hooker and is blackmailed by his government to go kill his former gang. Just the story of my life. How badass your protagonist is that he can slow the world down and it goes into this gorgeous sepia and then you can pick your targets slowly as if as if he's going into this zen place in his mind. Red Dead Redemption didn't just give you missions. It gave you the ability to explore a continent's worth of gaming possibilities. If you wanted to just head out into the wilderness and do little mini side quests the whole entire time, you could absolutely do that. Or you could follow a main storyline and actually have like the directed quest lines and everything and not get distracted by, you know, the prostitute that needed to be rescued. <laughs> yes. I got the game, never beat it, but I did spend 40 hours hunting cougars. So there's that. And in true Rockstar Games fashion, the Red Dead Redemption soundtrack was a standout on its own. 
all the music in the game is actual tracks from these old spaghetti western movies. They did an amazing job putting this stuff together and really, you know, capturing that feeling. Amazing music, a troubled hero, and lots of gunfights. Red Dead Redemption is everything a Western should be. If it were a movie, it would be considered one of the best Western movies of all time. This next game snuck up behind us and knocked us out cold. Coming in at number 45, it's Metal Gear Solid. Metal Gear Solid, I gotta take the glasses off for this one. Metal Gear Solid is like a classic. Solid joined the extremely popular Metal Gear franchise in 1998, with players inhabiting the role of retired super spy, Solid Snake. Yeah, Snake is just like this ultra, solo, stealth, uh, badass guy. Can you shoot me, rookie? That game was amazing because all of its boss battles were so completely unique and different. I am Sniper Wolf, and I always kill what I aim at. Sniper Wolf, that battle was so tense. It was a mind bender. That's when a game is good, is when you can remember screenshots of it in your head. But Metal Gear Solid is recognized for more than just its incredible boss battles. It was also a watershed moment for players used to simply blasting their way through action games. Metal Gear Solid didn't invent the stealth mode, it perfected it. Every other game, you would just try to kill as many people as possible. But in Metal Gear, it took strategy. You had to sneak around. The first time I played it, it was just like, like, what is this game? Like, I would hide on the wall, knock on the wall. Doo, 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 doo. You're trying to be sneaky. When somebody sees you, they get a big exclamation point on top of their head. Drink makes that noise. People, Doo. And they couldn't find me. I used to always hide and just yoke people out or run. But you know what I'm saying? It was like a real sneaky game. Even with multiple installments in the Metal Gear series, for many, Metal Gear Solid will always be the best of the bunch. They pushed the, the boundaries of gaming at the time further than, than any other game I'd seen. Coming up next, one of the most controversial game series ever. What about the 300 people you kill just driving around? Takes on one of the most difficult. It was face melting. Plus, the game that changed Mario forever. Oh, this is really scary. It's 3D, it's real. But first, which of these is the best-selling game in the Mario Brothers series? The answer, when we return. Before the break, we asked, which of these is the best-selling game in the Mario Brothers series? The answer, the original Super Mario Brothers. It flew off the shelves over 40 million times. Our next game is the most recent release in a series that's as groundbreaking as it is controversial. Number 44, Grand Theft Auto 4. Released in 2008, GTA 4 became an instant classic. Grand Theft Auto 4 is a lot like Grand Theft Auto 3, but it's a big upgrade in terms of graphics, in terms of the overall uh, gameplay of the world. So the whole Grand Theft Auto series, I think, kind of hit a high watermark with Grand Theft Auto 4. I do this all day if I hit. You're this guy, Nico Bellic, who comes from some unnamed Eastern European country, and you've been through some type of war, and you come to this country, and you find yourself getting into a lot of trouble. Yeah, I love Nico Bellic because he's just so, uh, he's tired. I don't know, something about that. that I, I'm not saying I feel that same way, but uh, I identify with Nico Bellic. Also, probably the same taste in clothes. I always felt kind of skeevy and, after playing as this Russian mobster. The fact that he, he was dating that American girl. Oh, hey, Nico. <laughs> plus, my wife sleeping in the other room, so I felt like I was cheating, like living this other life. Nico, it, it's, it's not quite as evil as Grand Theft Auto 3, which which might be better. It might I might be able to sleep better at night after playing Grand Theft Auto 4 than Grand Theft Auto 3, because Nico does seem to have a soul. He's trying to decide if he's going to live a good life or a bad life. But the thing is, even if you pick a good life at the end, he's like, oh, I picked a good life. And I was like, OK. What about the 300 people you kill just driving around? But the creators of Grand Theft Auto 4 didn't forget the simple pleasures that made the series so popular in the first place. So awesome. 
what I call it murder ride. That's my, I don't play the missions. I just get in a car, jack and just start running over people. Or sometimes I'll just like, just start cracking on people and just murdering them just solidly. The hardest I've ever laughed playing a video game was with Grand Theft Auto 4. Up next, one of the greatest blast the crap out of everything games of all time. At number 43, we give you Quake 3 Arena. If you've got balls, if you've got game, and you really want to step into the real first person shooter arena at the highest level, I think it's Quake 3. Released to PCs in 1999, Quake 3 Arena strove to be pure multiplayer rocket blasting fun. And it was a lot of fun. I mean, I loved, I loved Quake. That game, you know, inspired a lot of other games. Every moment of the gameplay has to be fun. You know, it has to be fun what you're doing at the keyboard and the mouse, you know, as you're moving around, jumping and shooting at things. And while shooting at anything that moves sounds easy, not getting blown to jibs by the legions of fanatical id fans was anything but. Quake 3 Arena's introduction to jibs in the modern lexicon uh, has led me to walk around constantly looking for blown up pieces of people. But there aren't any, because our cities keep the streets clean. First person shooters today obviously are probably the biggest business out there. But if you want to truly find out if you're good at first person shooters, pick up Quake 3 and play it. My answer, I'm terrible. Just because of how intense it was. It was one of those games where you'd come out of it and you'd feel like you'd actually been in, uh, in war. You'd come out kind of sweaty and feel like you'd done your own little nom time in front of your laptop while you're eating ho-hos. <laughs> It is amazing how good the people got at that game. And now, a side-scrolling adventure that challenged, befuddled, and slowly drove an entire generation of players insane. This game was the difficulty equivalent of repeatedly slamming your head in a car door. It was agonizing. It was kind of fun at the same time. At number 42, it's Ghosts and Goblins. Frustration. Anger, just, it's when I discovered I had a vein in the middle of my forehead that could almost burst open. But I kept on going back because who doesn't want to fight evil in your underwear? Just f face melting. You got one hit, maybe two if you're lucky. Next hit, you're dead. Sorry, kid, go home. You're a knight, and you have to go rescue your girlfriend or the princess from, like, these evil goblin guys. And when you get hit, your armor disappears and you're just in your underwear, which is humiliating, because not only are you fighting demons, now you're also just in your underwear. That's like two different nightmares I have combined into one. Released in 1985, Ghosts and Goblins is considered one of the hardest games ever, because to truly defeat Satan, you have to beat every level twice. Oh, the thing that drove me mad about Ghosts and Goblins. I went through it twice, got to the top, destroyed that weird monster thing. And I'll never forget, at the very end, it says, congratulations, with no S at the end. How hard is it to just say congratulations? <laughs> and now, the title that helped revolutionize 3D gaming. Landing at number 41 is Super Mario 64. Here we go! Definitely Super Mario 64. Bigger worlds, better bosses, everything was more fun. Uh, I had to finish it, I was obsessed with it. Mario Brothers on steroids. Released in the summer of 1996, Super Mario 64 added a whole new dimension to Nintendo's most recognizable franchise. It was everything you want Mario to be, but in, in 3D. For me, it was like the, the culmination of video games at the time, that was it. That was the first time I really paid attention uh, to Mario game, and it just blew my mind. It was one of the main reasons I stopped making PC games and started getting really into console games, because I started to play them a lot because of Mario 64. This was some good right here. You can beep that part out. My mistake. While Mario 64 changed just about everything for Mario, it didn't change the fact that Princess Peach had to be saved again.
Are they together? Are they dating? Is this just a potential girlfriend? Is this this girl he's a crush on? I don't know. We all know what Mario really wants. Here we go! And you gotta like jump through these paintings and you go in the paintings and each painting is like, it's like snow world. And then you have all these levels of like, Snowmen and penguins, and it's like volcano land. You know, wet and dry world and big small world. And yeah, I remember like feeling a sense of fear first getting into Bowser's Castle. The flames and the lava, and you're just like, oh, this is really scary. It's 3D, it's real. <laughs> the 3D world of Mario 64 allowed players to battle Bowser and his minions in a whole new way. And you get behind Bowser, you grab his tail, and you spin the 64 joystick around and you toss them all the way off the stage. That was like one of my highlights, you know what I'm saying? I didn't know my, my thumbs, I mean, could do circles like that and it's controlling the camera and everything else. Yeah. It was so innovative and you still see it today and you see it in games where they don't get it right. Like they got it right in that one. You see games now today, you're like, they, they did that 16 years ago. Can we please get camera angles right? Come on guys. Super Mario 64 not only solidified Nintendo's standing in a new age of console gaming, it changed the way people play games forever. It was like a new world. I mean, the, the, that it could exist in three dimensions like that, and it was just so expansive, and it was mind-blowing. i never seen anything like it, you know? Coming up on the top 100 video games of all time. Definitely a Halo guy. Master Chief shoots them up. Mike Tyson knocks them down. Mike Tyson, I was coming after his ass. The biggest games of today. Joker and Bane and Clayface. They're, they're untouchable, man. Take on the all-time classics. It was a hack and slash game, but sweet. And only one will survive. Best game of all time. We're counting down the final 40, when the top 100 video games of all time continues.